This video is brought to you by absolutely nothing. But why? Soul Beat Imagine is a 2000 black comedy written and directed by John Waters. The film stars Melanie Griffith as a snobby A-list Hollywood actress who is kidnapped by a band of terrorist filmmakers. They force her to star in their underground film. Violent group of terrorists to menace the lives of millions of people. Steve, Steve, Steven Dorff stars as the eponymous character and leader of the group. With Alicia Witt, Adrian Greer, Michael Shannon, and Maggie Gyllenhaal co starring as the rest of the gang of filmmakers. The film, whose title also the name of Dorf's character, alludes to the legendary director Cecil B. DeMille, is loosely based on the 1974 kidnapping of Patty Hearst. You know, if you know the whole story, watch Drunk History. So Patty Hearst descended from William Randolph Hearst. He is a very wealthy man, and her dad is Randolph Hearst, but essentially they own all of media. And so, you know, she's she's from that kind of the people who made the country. Take it away, Mojo Cop. Hollywood A-list actress Honey Whitlock publicly presents herself as a sweet and considerate woman, but actually a profane, unreasonable, and demanding diva. Do not say ass to me, trailer trash. I will have you fired. While in Baltimore to attend a premiere, Honey is kidnapped by the maniac film director, Cecil B. Demented, and his band of misfits, Andy Warhol worshipping artists who have branded themselves kamikaze filmmakers. I'd like you to meet your co-stars. I call them the sprocket holes. Cecil explains that they want to make his masterpiece and needs Honey to star as the lead. We're horny. <laughs> But our film comes first. The group's first location is a movie theater playing Patch Adams' The Director's Cut. Patch Adams does not deserve a director's cut. The first one was long enough. Several bystanders note an interview, an interview that Honey seems younger and cooler than her recent Hollywood films. But a spokesman of the Baltimore Film Commission says, This administration have never and will never condone brutality. The sparking holes then invade the set of Forrest Gump sequel. Hello. My name's Forrest, Forrest Gump. That's a damn shame. At their last location, Cecil is shooting the final scene at a local drive-in while law enforcement are alerted. You can make it. Just one more camera set up and we can have sex. Oh, God. <clears throat> like I said, this movie is more relevant now than it has ever been, especially with pop culture and everything just basically being like rehashes and rehashes. I mean, I think I've said it best when I've said if chaos magic is the art of making something out of nothing, then we need to hire more chaos mages than writers because they just regurgitate the same shit and throw their fucking SJW bullshit down our throats. I mean, come on! I mean, yeah, I'm part of like a few stupid shitty groups, Facebook groups that like are obviously just a bunch of Trumpers who call themselves fans, like bounding in the comics. They're just, it's just nothing but hate, you know? But yeah, they have a few points. You know, like the fact that like DC Comics is trying to make Superman gay now or making Dean Robin number two, Tim Drake, bye. You know, it's like, just do something original. Make your own original shit. Why do you have to fucking ruin our shit? Thanks. But enough about that. What I'm trying to get at is, yeah, this movie, it hits every checkbox in, in the right way too. Everybody has their fucked up quirks, like the character Rodney, you know, the hairdresser is a guy who's ashamed of his heterosexuality, which kind of sounds like now with these woke school little bitches like Dominic Noble reading like gay erotica and doing reviews on him, and yet you're claiming to be straight. You're, you're gay. You suck the dick, and you're calling yourself straight. Shut up and get to the point. The character uh, Raven, the insane Satanist chick, which by the way, Maggie Gyllenhaal, hottest she's ever been. Yeah, we see her boobs in the secretary, but hottest she's ever been in my opinion. And of course, fucking my favorite character, the main guy himself, Cecil B. Demented played by Steven Dorff. Best role he's ever played, best character he's ever played. I relate to him in so many levels, like in every aspect of what, and the whole celibacy for celluloid. No one gets laid until we finished our movie. You know, this movie was a big inspiration for me and what I do. I mean, <laughs> maybe a shitty YouTuber on here, but like in the underground music scene in Hollywood, I am Cecil B. Demented. You know, I am that guy. I may not be a big deal on this fucking shitty platform, but yeah, you know, and then of course other characters like Cherish, the porn star shit. Hi. I played you in lots of porno movies. Some kind of happiness? I've already shot it. Only it's called some kind of horniness. That's all behind me. I'm an outlaw cinema girl now. And then I love also, like, even though Melanie Griffith is really annoying about it, she, that's what that's the whole point of her character is, you know, diva, actors, A-lister. You know, the way she acts is literally like, well, that's why I laugh at all the Hollywood in general. And they go, uh, let's care about the people, blah, blah, blah. In reality, they're just some smug people who don't even want to be around poor people. <laughs> 
Oh, and the soundtrack, man. The soundtrack. They have the Locust on there. If you know who the Locust is, I know you've heard, I know that you little pansies heard of this band called uh, Cow Decapitation. Well, Cow Decapitation used to be part of a band called The Locust. The Locust were a band called Swing Kids. They're like one of the early grindcore bands. And yeah, if you don't want to know what grindcore is, uh, eh, I hate to recommend this pansy, but watch Page Fire. He did a thing about how to write grindcore. It's true, yeah. You know, Page Fire, he's a poser. He obviously never been to a show in his life because he went on a thrash metal video. Right? Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. Yeah. Hands down, yeah, this movie, nine and a half out of ten.